Hey, hey, welcome to Cinema Recap. You're gonna be the first test subjects for Oxygen, a lung-wrenching film. Grab your gas masks and let's just dive right into this. Spoilers ahead. Well, this has already given me the shining vibes. A few flashes of rat testing and subliminal imagery should help catch your attention. The woman suddenly wakes up and slowly wriggles out of some sort of skin like a snake, freeing herself slowly. She then painstakingly removes that IV from her arm, ow, and she gets a flashback of being rushed into a hospital, then fully frees herself. Help me! The men discuss how some lard face is about to invade their operations. The old coot tells Shades that he comes to town every Tuesday. So Django over here clears his schedule for that. After that, she panics. The room lights up and we see she's in some sort of high-tech pod. The pod's AI says there's only 35% of oxygen left. Yeah, thanks, Jarvis. Anyways, the woman is super confused. She wants out, but Milo's like an Asian parent, so he declines. And Milo gives a rundown of what happened, as there's an error. Did you drug me? Basically, he doesn't know much either, so the woman's trapped in a high-tech Amazon box as she panics when she realizes this. She reflects that she's in a cryogenic stasis pod because she's sick. And now the pod received errors, so now she's officially screwed. Milo says there's no response from anyone yet. It's terminal, I'm gonna die. Finally, she calms herself down so that she can save some oxygen. But man, her thoughts just emphasize claustrophobia more. Milo, identify patient. We gonna get demonetized for that word? Yeah, whatever Susan says. The woman asks Milo to give her a mirror. She asks again what her name is, but male GLaDOS over here says that she's registered as Omicron 267. She closes the reflection and then remembers what life was like before being in a Toy Story box. Oxygen level 33%. Then she gets a boatload of choking images. That totally helps. She then wants to access her medical report, but it's suddenly unavailable. Milo could be running on a crummy Windows OS. She's begging HAL 9000 to let her out, but she needs an authorization code, which she doesn't have. So she tries to call the police through Milo. She tries to give some info to tip off the cops, but they think it's a prank. I'm running out of oxygen. So she's asking them to track the call. The 5-0's asking her if she remembers anything, but she only remembers blurry images of a hospital and an emergency room. Translation, you're on your own, girl. Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of it. She asks Milo where they are, but it also doesn't know. She's panicking because she thinks she's Paula Schultz. The one time asks her to dig up as much info on the pod that she's in. She finds out the pod was made by Cryosalid and gives its serial number. This movie's essentially a panic room simulator, as she, you guessed it, panics again after the officer passes the call to his superior. No, no, please don't leave me by myself. She calms down a bit and asks Milo to perform a DNA scan on herself. Searching Google images is okay, contacting cops not so much. Alright, that pod better have a warranty. Quip aside, we finally get her real name. Elizabeth Hansen, Liz for short. There's a bit of a rumble, and then... Hello? Is anyone there? She gets a call from Captain Moreau, someone from the Department of Science and Technology. Of course, he gets a bit choppy like a Discord in a Middle Eastern country, but he comes back to ask about Liz's oxygen level. The captain asks how much time she has, but Milo says that she only has 72 minutes. 43 if she keeps panicking like at the disco. And the captain asks, who could have done this? Of course, she doesn't know, and she just wants them to find her. But they haven't found her because... Yup, pod was bought on eBay. She then asks for a newer medical report. But Emilo says she's fine, even giving a life expectancy of 82 years. That is, if she survives the next 43 minutes. She's not sick, so it's time to panic about something else. Her blood pressure shooting up? She panics and then calms down. You know, the usual. The captain reassures her that they're constantly doxing her so that they'll be able to track her. A team is going to meet the manufacturer, and they're going to try to look for those codes. Of course, now the captain doesn't have Discord Nitro, so he disconnects suddenly. 
She tries and tries to reconnect, and then the panic, then calm cycle happens yet again. How about this? You take a shot every time she panics and then calms down. Who's going to succumb first? You or her? Tell us what happens in the comments. How can AI be so based? With how much Liz is panicking, Milo takes matters into his own servos and tries to forcibly administer a sedative, but he misses. But you can always go the dictator way and gas her. She slips into a few hallucinations and then Milo says her oxygen is at 23%. It's been 17 minutes since her last call. Oxygen level 22%. Then she Googles her name, pulling up some press articles about her. She finds out that she's a doctor in cryogenics and then recalls a few memories in the lab. She pulls up social media and finds out that Facebook meta is a terrible idea. No, not really. She just finds out that she has a husband. She cycles through many pictures of him together, remembering his name as Leo. She tries to call him, remembering a few fragmented memories, and then tries to call the next number. Someone finally picks up. I'm trying to call Leo. Is he there? Oh, no. She says she's Leo's wife. Then they hang up. Well, she reaches that caller again, but... Well, she keeps on calling back, but no cigar. Think fast, 9 plus 10. Oh, I guess I'm stupid. Again, she tries to free herself from her bondage of wires and tubes, eventually freeing her legs. She sits up a bit and tries to pull some of the wires, but surprise rat. The rat pisses off. Then she tries to scrape some stuff off the pod's wall. Kind of looks like dirt. Milo tries to forcibly sedate her again, and this time, she nabs that needle from Milo's mechanical arm. She uses it to scrape some more dirt off, but she gets zapped. Would you like a sedative? Then the drinking game continues, bottoms up. She cries a bit, of course, and then Captain Moreau calls. Well, Liz is happy, but she senses a disturbance. So she asks the captain what's really going on. Milo suddenly says that she only has 17% left. And then she tells the captain that she's seeing things. The captain says that it's a psychotic episode thanks to the isolation. She's beginning to lose grip on reality. So the next logical thing to do is stab her hand with a needle. Oh dear God, and she makes that stab wound deep too. Then a few more husband montages and Liz asks how long she was gone. She tells the captain that she remembered her husband that they were trying to make some kids. Nice banter topic, I guess. Leo seems familiar to Captain Moreau, so she's asking to find out what happened to him. The captain drops the ball and says, according to Intel, Liz was never married. Something comparable to maidenless behavior. I see. She then tells Milo to Google Leo Ferguson. But no results. Liz is slowly getting a little schizo thread. She claims to Captain Moreau that she called Leo's number and a woman picked up, but... Listen to me. Leo isn't real either. Sheesh. I guess that also goes to any of your waifus too. And then the captain just straight up says that she's high on copium. Bottom line is that Liz thinks he's lying. But he says back in college, she was straight up balling. Didn't think we'd shove some basketballers in some dumpy jar. Captain still says that she's very accomplished in all sorts of sciencey sciences, but... None of that sounds familiar to Liz. What comes next is some metaphysical mental torture wherein Liz claims to know something, but Captain Moreau disproves her with so-called facts and logic. The captain says she went to Oxford, and she's like that's where she met Leo. Again, bottoms up, and she hears Captain Moreau talking to someone else again. Well, she thinks the captain is BSing her, so? Milo in the call. No, wait. Disconnected. Ominous classical piano music and questions that make me question reality? Sign me up. If not me, Liz surely got signed up. Someone tries to call again, but she rejects him. She tells Milo to replay the last five minutes of the previous call she had with the captain. She then hears something ominous, and then... Tell her she's hearing things, that it's a stress. She thinks the jig is up. Then some woman from the Leo call earlier picks up. She's saying there's not much time, but keeps on blabbering about cryptic BS. And Liz really wants to talk to Leo, but the woman says it's impossible because, well, Leo's dead. Oxygen level 14%. Then another call comes in, but this time she accepts it. She tries to persuade Liz to listen to her, but she's not buying it. Just as Liz was about to end the call. Milo, end, end the, the codes. 
Lady, you should have led with that. Of course, she wants them. But she tells Liz that she can't use them to open the cryogenic pod, so, again, she threatens to hang up. But this time, she actually recites the codes. NM347. So, they transfer admin rights. The woman voice warns her against opening the pod. But of course, Liz gives the caller 10 seconds. So she tells her to go to the settings and set the centrifuge controls to zero. That doesn't sound underground. Liz and the wires and tubes suddenly start floating. Ah, so this is Space Odyssey. You'll be beyond the range of our communication satellites. The female voice says she's going far from Earth's communication range. So she turns on the micro thrusters back and gravity kicks in. Liz only has 13% of oxygen left. And the female voice tells her that she was in hypersleep for a mission. And then something went wrong. Something always goes wrong. So the female voice wants her back in hypersleep. Liz is asking what the mission was. And the woman says that it was to colonize a planet. Not to mention the planet is like 14 light years away from Earth. She then remembers that this was all a military procedure. Then the woman tells her that this mission is happening because the human race will perish in two generations. 12%, 12%. She inquires about Captain Moreau and his lies, which the woman defended that he had no choice since the government was involved. She says it was all kept under wraps in order to not spread panic towards the general public. Essentially, they wanted her to perish so that no one would know about this little government oopsie. 12% of oxygen left and Liz asks how Leo bit the dust. Essentially a virus that's too real and too familiar. The woman's voice then says that she's been in hypersleep this whole time. How long? 12 years. Well, she could have raised a kid in that amount of time. The voice then asks not to waste time and helps her to fix Liz's ship. Milo essentially says that something was damaged with the oxygen. So they get into some Albert Einstein business. But something interrupts the female voice, so she instructs Liz to find Leo and return hypersleep before the oxygen levels go down to 2% or, you know, death. Find what triggers your memories. Find Leo. The lady on the line gets audibly swatted and the call is terminated. Whoo, imagine that intergalactic phone bill. She then tries to recall more memories. She asks Milo who authorized this operation. But Milo says it was her genius. She's thinking hard, and then tries to manage her bodily functions with Milo's help. Oxygen level 11%. Unfortunately for her, there are no bodily processes that she could deactivate without putting her life at risk. She committed more self-harm, and more slow-mo Michael Bay-style flashbacks come up. Soon, she starts scraping the walls of that pot again. So go on, electrocute. <laughs> Wish granted. She does it again, and lights up like a Christmas tree. And then she remembers Leo getting defibrillated. Remembering this, she tries to call up Alice Hansen. And then her mom answers. Ah, oh, honey, if you only knew how bad things really were. Her mom's like, come on over to the house. But, you know, her daughter's about 40,000 miles away from Earth. I love you so much. She then disconnects. Whew, how could it get any worse? Oh, that's how. She asks how long she has until the oxygen's gone. And Milo responds with three minutes. Oxygen level 6%. Suddenly a rumble falters through. So Liz asks how long she'll last in space. Survey says 9 to 11 seconds of excruciating pain. Then the oxygen drops to 5%. So Liz comes up with a clutch move. Unlocking the door. She realizes something. She asks Milo how many Omicron units are there. To which Milo says 10,000. Can you shut off that alarm? That's convenient. She asks for a visual of them. So? Underhanded jump scare. Finally, Liz was able to say let there be light. And I was more surprised that she actually was nearer to Earth than expected. In fact, you can now see a lot of the crash damage and rubble inside some giant cylindrical spacecraft. Sun's coming up, so Milo puts back the filters. Liz wants to know how many pods are still functional. Milo tells her that 9,567 are still good to go. And she finds out that she's one of the units that are considered lost. 1. Omicron 267 As for the others, well, they bit the dust, specifically during an asteroid collision. Liz then uses Milo to search for Leo in one of the pods. I say good luck to finding him amongst 10,000 pods.
Oxygen level 4%. She tries remembering a number from a lab rat. She then remembers Leo's unit. It's 42. Liz finds him and asks Milo to remove the covering and you know, this is just a formula for another jump scare. You're alive. I knew you were. Oh, guess I was wrong. She thinks something's still up because Leo's scars are gone. Liz asks Milo to Google her. Then she pulls up one of the videos. It's a video of some old hag saying she's achieved some sort of memory transfer using rats. She's intrigued to a grim possibility. So she asks Milo what her age is. And Milo says 122 years, 42 days, 17 hours and 56 minutes old. She wants to replay the last call of the woman's voice and then asks Milo to do a voice recognition scan on her. Milo says it was Dr. Elizabeth Hansen. I'm you in a box. Ah, my guess is right. She's a clone. She goes mad with the existential nightmare she just learned. I'm a fucking clone! With this lethal tantrum, the oxygen drops, so Liz records a message to Omicron 42, who's Leo. She relays her sentiments to him and gives him the existential crisis as well, since they're clones. I'll be gone soon. Have a good life. She gets another bright idea and asks to see the processors. Oxygen falls at 3%. Then an interruption. 58. I ignore, ignore, 57. ignore. Oh boy, she's gonna end either way. Milo's over here counting down her doom, where she begins unfastening herself and then just in the nick of time. She removes that injection. After that, she deactivates all the peaceful death protocols, and then she asks to go back to hypersleep. Milo says this is impossible because she's disconnected, meaning all of her wires and tubes are disconnected. Milo says all of them are vital. And when Liz takes a breather... Oh, for booting up cold. I think the lack of air is getting to her head. So again, shots up. Oxygen, 2%. She's rushing to painfully inject all the tubes and wires back into her system. I tell ya, the tummy stabbing probably looks the worst, so keep clenching your fists. And then she's told that she won't survive the reanimation. That's a bummer. I'm not the only one lost out here. She then monologues her farewell and ends her recording to Leo. Hold the phone. One last brain blast from our main gal takes place diverting all the oxygen of all the lost units to her own pod. Since, you know, corpses don't breathe. Milo then says it'll take 14,227 minutes to divert all that oxygen to her. At this point, she tearfully and joyously decides to get into hypersleep, while all that air comes in while she's resting. Now, why didn't she do that before when she got the admin rights? Well, after finally accepting a sedative from Milo, she says sorry to that living calculator. And Milo surprisingly accepts the apology. Before going into a deep sleep, she wants to know about the planet. Basically, it's a bigger Earth, but you can only survive on the day and night border. The journey to the planet will take a whopping 34 years, so better think of your retirement plan in your sleep. Once the ship lands, the pods inside will slowly drop like white little sprinkles on a wolf's credit card. Liz wants a bedtime story, so Milo gives her a description of uh, the Maui beach. Me name Omicron 267, Liz. She soon succumbs into a deep slumber. Then, Milo ducks her in. The oxygen drops to absolute zero. Taken outside, the ship engages hyperdrive and zoom it goes. Now later, much, much later, 34 years later, we are on the planet and success. Liz and Leo reunite. And that was oxygen. What did you guys think about this schizo-claustrophobic flick? Make sure to tell us using that hashtag cinema recap. Oxygen was released by Netflix, starring Melanie Laurent, Matthew Amalric, and Malik Zidi. Until the next Solar System movie, farewell.